All right, here we want to solve part three of this mechanical drawing. I want to solve question C, which we serve as part three of this mechanical drawing. So we have done part one, which is on question A that says that we should draw the sectional front elevation of the assembly on cutting plane PP, which is this drawing here then we have also done question b as part two of this problem which says that we should draw the end elevation of the assembly to the right of views 5a above so which is this then part c we serve as the sorry question c we serve as part three of this video which says that we should draw the plan of the assembly. We should draw the plan of the assembly. All right. Um, we have to draw the plan of the assembly. Um, so we need to produce this. We need to produce what we have here. So after we have produced it, um, as you can see that we have a cell screw here. We have a cell screw here, and the cell screws are two in number. If we are looking at it from the top down, so they are two in number. But what we have here, we have one cell screw because one part of this object, one part of the whole assembly has been cut off. So that makes us to have one cell screw here. That makes us to have one cell screw here. But by the time we are to draw the plan, we are going to have two cell screws. Two cell screws on the plan as you can see here so this is the plan for the two posts this is the two posts as we have said in part one this two the, the two uh, this is the two posts this is the front elevation of the two posts this is the plan for the two posts so we are going to have a cell screw here a cell screw here. these two these two cell screws will be shown in the plan it will be, should be shown in the plan including the boat the t boat that we have here which is this we are going to see it in the plan we are going to see it in the plan so that's what we are going to put in the plan including the watcher so which is on the t-boat here which we, we have it here so we are going to put it in the plan all right so what we need to do as i said is to replicate what we have here then we put the necessary things there all right so before I move fully to the solution of that question C, which we serve as uh, part three of this video. There is something that I need to explain here. I missed. I made a mistake here just for me to make this tick. This should have been a tick line. That is from here. This here it will be hidden, but here we are going to make it a tick line because we can see this part. Okay. Here also, I do the same thing. all right so this is how it should look so now let's look at the plan so i'm not going to hide anything here i'm going to show you everything i'm not going to pause the video you need to see how this should be done so as we have here the distance from here to here is 80 millimeters the distance from here to here is 50 millimeters so we are going to produce that and then these hidden lines that we have here, they are for this point and this point. This point and this point and this point and this point. Because when we are looking at the uh, at the assembly of the object downward, this point and this point will be hidden from us. So we are going to leave these lines hidden. We are going to leave them hidden. Though in the question, we are told that hidden details 
are not required hidden details are not made. okay maybe we just leave them so we are not going to put them there since we are told that hidden details are not required so we can leave them out so we can leave them out so what we just need to do here let's leave the hidden details so what we just need to do here is to um so we are going to project this line so project this line down then we project this line down here then so we are going to produce the horizontal line then we take a measurement of 50 millimeters take a measurement of 50 millimeters So this is 50 millimeters. So draw your horizontal line. Draw your horizontal line. Okay, so after doing this, so the next thing that we are going to do is that uh, let's make this thick lines because you can see so these edges, you can see these edges. Alright, so the next thing that we are going to do is that to make our work simple, to make our work simple. So what I'll just say is that let us locate the center of the the center of this 50. That's 25. So the center. So this is 25. Then we are going to draw a center line through this. Alright, so having done this, so we are going to produce this center line too. This center line from the T boat. So we are going to produce it down here. Oh. Then we produce this center line of the cell screw. Alright, so the next thing I'm going to do here, as we are told in the question, for the tilt boat, we are told that the distance across flat, across flat is 18. Distance across flat is 18. So what I will do is that I will divide 18 by 2. That is 9. So I will take a measurement of 9 millimeters here. Take a measurement of 9 millimeters. This tilt boat is at the center here. So at the center so i will draw a circle of radius nine millimeters here all right this is it so after drawing this circle the next thing i'm going to do is that i'm going to draw a horizontal line here because we are told that distance across flat distance across flat so we draw horizontal lines up here and here then we take our 60 degree cell square take the 60 degree cell square so um, so 60 degree side of the cell square that's what we need to use just look at the way i'm doing it so it's very simple as i've explained before so draw this line to this side then so we draw this line to this side and then so we're going to draw this line to this side and then we draw this line to this side to form an hexagon because this is an hexagonal knot. So we have formed the hexagon. So the next thing I'm going to do is to bring out the hexagon. So when you are given a distance across flats, this is how you need to construct the 
hexagon. All right. Um, okay. So, so we have constructed the hexagon. We have constructed the hexagon. Having constructed the ex, uh, hexagon, so this hexagon is the top of the knot. It's top of the knot. So, having constructed the hexagon, the next thing I want to do is to draw the circle for the T-bolt itself. So the T-bolt is it to be driven through the knot, through this knot, to be driven through, the, the, through the, this knot. So we have to drive it through this knot. So now, this part that we have seen here is the top part of the knot. So we need to draw the circle for the bolt itself itself for the t-bolt itself so we are told here that the diameter of this bolt is 12 millimeters so we divide 12 by 2 that will give us 6 so you take a measurement of 6 millimeters on your ruler with your compass then you draw a circle so this is the circle now having drawn this circle that is for the major diameter of the T-boat. The major diameter of the T-boat. And then we also have what we call nominal diameter, which is for the, uh, for the inner part of the thread. So just take like uh, 5 mm as the radius. Take 5 mm as the radius. And then you put it here. And you draw a circle. So draw a circle. Take it easy. So when you draw this circle, you don't close it. Just stop it like this. So just stop it like this. So that is done. So we have done that. So the next one that you want to do is that you want to draw as I said, that the cell screws, we are going to see the end of the cell screws. One will be here, one will be here as we have it here. So the center is 10 millimeter. So distance from here to the center is 10 millimeters. From here to the center is 10 millimeters. So let's get that. So what we need to do is to take 10 millimeters. So we take 10 millimeters here. And then we take 10 millimeters here. And then, so we draw the horizontal center line. All right, so after doing this, so for the, for the cell screw, the diameter that we are given here is distance across corner which is 12 distance across corner is 12 millimeters for the end of the cell screw <clears throat> so you take a measurement of six millimeters with your compass six millimeters with your compass and you draw a circle so draw a circle here Just take it easy, the radius is small. So you draw a circle. And then you also draw a circle here. So draw a circle here with the same radius. Six millimeters. All right, so after doing this, so put your compass at this point. So make an arc up and down. Then here also, draw arcs up 
and uh, here also draw ax up and down so this is the same thing here draw ax up and down all right so the next thing that we're going to do here is to join this point together so this is it so you join this together to produce the hexagon So I want you to see everything. So you need to see everything so that you will know what to do when you come across a question like this. The question is actually simple. So I've explained it before. So, all right, so we have drawn that. All right, so those are the end of the cell screw. So we have drawn the end of the cell screw. All right, um, the next thing that I want to put here is that here we have a washer. So we have a washer here. For the tilt bolt, this is the washer that we have here. And we are told that um, uh, outside distance, our outside diameter is 26 millimeters. So we divide 26 by two, that will give us 13. So we take a measurement of 13 millimeters. Take a measurement of 13 millimeters here. Okay. So 13 millimeters. So this is it. So you put it here and you draw a circle. So the plan of the washer will be a circle. To be a circle. So this is how it will look. So it's a circle. That is the plan of the washer. So this is how it will look. So since we are told to um, leave other hidden details or to leave hidden details or the hidden details, details are not required. So we are not to leave that. We are going to leave that out. So the only thing that we need to do now is to draw this line. We are going to see this line. So need to put this line there so after doing this um, I think that's all so we are done we are done so this is all that we need to do so we are asked to leave the hidden details or hidden details are not required so this is what we need to do so after we have done this that means you are done with the work so this is part three of the video and this is the complete solution of the video on this mechanical drawing question so subscribe to this youtube youtube channel so that you can get more videos to watch about technical drawing whenever i upload new videos thank you for watching thank you for listening god bless you keep on practicing and i believe that you'll be able to do it better than i do thank you